My name is James Page. I'm a Jesuit priest currently studying at the Pontifical Biblical Institute in Rome. I come from New Orleans, so my home parish was uh, connected to Loyola University, uh, Holy Name of Jesus Parish. Uh, and in my Jesuit formation, I was doing philosophy studies at the University of Toronto in Regis College. I focused mostly on hermeneutics, so philosophy around the study of interpretation, language, uh, that kind of thing. And then I did my theology cycle of studies in Boston College at the School of Theology and Ministry, where I got my licentiate in biblical studies. So in terms of beginning our studies uh, in the Holy Land, uh, in, at the, in the Biblicum in Jerusalem, uh, that gives us the opportunity to uh, frame and found our study of scripture in archaeology. Now, the benefit of this is that when I'm reading this text of scripture of Jesus uh, walking through Capernaum, uh, preaching in the synagogue in Capernaum, I can actually be in Capernaum and walk in a synagogue there and kind of place myself in the text in a way that you can do prayerfully and contemplatively, uh, but the, the chance to be there in person makes it so much more real. It's really actually hard to explain in words, just the sense that you get um, from being in the tomb, uh, the sepulcher uh, in Jerusalem, uh, to walking uh, across the plains of Megiddo, right? Uh, you're, you're witnessing these archaeological excavations, these ancient uh, sites, and having it uh, come to life in front of you. I mean, obviously not in, <laughs> not in, in literally, but the idea being that um, you're able to see where these uh, figures uh, walked and lived. Um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, yeah, it's truly amazing. And in terms of my own uh, decision to remain in the Holy Land, so th there's there's this funny thing in uh, in the Old Testament when you're reading through Scripture. There's this kind of puzzling dynamic where when things tend to go south or when kind of catastrophe strikes, uh, there's this line that uh, goes, and God remembered his covenant, okay? So now, when I was first reading through scripture, that kind of puzzled me. I was like, okay, this, this seems to be a very forgetful God. He, he keeps having to remember his covenant, covenant uh, over, seemingly over and over again as you're reading through scripture. Um, but what you notice is that whenever this line happens, uh, or whenever you come across it, what the text seems to be communicating is that even though we, the people, may forget the covenant, even if we ourselves are torn apart or uh, enduring chaos, or e even when we forget to love our neighbor and each other, God remembers. God is able to remember for us. Uh, and this, the, because, because in Hebrew, there is no word, right, for, so history. So like history as, as though, you know, something that happens way, way back for other people at other times. Uh, the Hebrew word that we use is zikharon, which is memory. So the idea being that when you're reading through these texts, this is something that you should be remembering. Like, as in, it implicates you in this story of salvation. And so, at least for me, being able to 
kind of live that like foundational insight, this covenantal insight that God is the one remembering the covenant for us throughout time, even in all our frailty and human weakness. Um, so being able to live that out in the Holy Land was something that I thought I couldn't turn away from.